As you can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the positives of what it's like to live in South Korea as a foreigner. I have made a video on this topic already where I focused only on the negatives and if you haven't seen that and you would like to watch it, there'll be a link to that in the description of this video. Now, same as last video, instead of sat here looking at my bald head, we're going to go out to cool spots around Seoul. I'm going to share some positive vibes with you. Let's go. Put trousers on first. All right, let's go. The weather is so nice today, it's really warm, not too humid, the skies are blue, I can see the sun, it's a lovely day. So I've come out on my bicycle to the park with an iced coffee because before the video starts I want to give a shout out to my mum, big up mum, for buying me a coffee. She went to the link in the description of this video and supported my channel by buying me a coffee. If you would like to do the same and support me and get a shout out in the video, click that link below and you'll get a shout out and just leave it in the comments section below what you want the shout out to be and I'll do it. I'll do anything really. The weather here isn't one of the positives because that's good for Koreans and foreigners. I want to focus solely on what it's like as a foreigner. So the first positive is odd one out and to focus on that first positive instead of walking around the park I'm going to hop on my bike and cycle around my local neighborhood, Sangsu. Let's go. Oh, Jackie Chan mum. Living in Seoul, I feel like a bit of an odd one out. And I mean that in a good way. Like if I go to an area such as Cholsan or Chonho, I feel like I'm the only foreigner there and I'm in this completely new world. And when I do see another foreigner in the area, I'm like, what are you doing around here? And if you live in Seoul, you'll probably understand the feeling I'm talking about. But if you live in your home country, maybe not. So I'll explain it to you. Imagine if you had the opportunity to go to the moon or to Mars. And when you arrived there, there was all this new life that you didn't know existed. How fascinated would you be? That's what it feels like to live in Seoul. And I'm not comparing Koreans to aliens, although some of them are. I'm talking about the feeling of being immersed in a country, in a culture that's completely different to your own. The food's completely different, the people's different, the language is pretty much alien, you don't understand any of it. The architecture's completely different. It's just a really cool experience. It's a nice feeling to be cycling down the back streets of a Korean neighborhood and just notice that you're the odd one out and you are in a completely new environment and everything's new. Every day you can do something completely different and experience completely new things. Living in a foreign country is a lot more enjoyable than living in your home country where you're just a robot. Must get job, must have salary, must sit in traffic. Zzz. Life is boring. You're gonna die, worms are gonna eat your bodies, nobody's gonna remember who you are, so just live a little. Go to a foreign country and be an odd one out. That's what I say. Before I tell you number two, I want to ask you a question. How many of you have traveled your home country? And I don't mean just go to the seaside or to the park, but actually explored other cities or hiked the tallest mountains or been on camping trips. Hardly anybody, I guess, because most of us like to travel to foreign places. We're not really interested in our home countries. So being a foreigner in Seoul and having lived in numerous other countries, I can see how cool Seoul is as a city. So number two is Seoul is one of the coolest cities in the world. My favorite area in Seoul is a place called Cholsan. It's the first place I ever visited when I came to Korea. And from the floor to the ceiling of the buildings is just covered in neon lights. It's fantastic. 
The nightlife in Korea is never ending. You can stay out partying till the morning. This is a banger, it's a banger. Wait, hold on. Oh, it's a banger, it's a banger. And at 5 a.m. you can have a five course meal. The convenience stores are extremely convenient. They do four beers for 10,000 won and you can sit outside drinking them in the hot weather with no bother. Then you can go inside and have a hot snack. And the good thing about the convenience stores here is Compared with Thailand, they stop serving alcohol between 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Whereas in Korea, it's non-stop. You can party at any time you want to. Seoul is such a party city. Then, there's the layout of the city. Seoul has the coolest city centre in the world. Hands down the coolest. When you're standing in Gwanghwamun Square and you look behind Gyeongbokgung Palace, you've got the mountain range there. I don't know any other city in the world which has such a cool historical site in the centre with a view behind it in the city centre. Let me know in the comments section which capital city is cooler than Seoul. There's also the awesome history of Seoul. All the museums are free to enter. There's lots of monuments that you can go and visit. Each area of Seoul has its own unique style. All the buildings are mismatched. There's loads of alleyways you can get lost down and pretty much at the end of each alleyway there's a surprise either a really nice restaurant you never knew existed or a cool bar or a gaming arcade you never know what you're going to find at the end of these alleyways i could blabber on about how cool seoul is as a city all day long but i want to get to the next positive but stick around until the end because the final positive is going to be very funny and worth your time and remember if you're liking this video click the like button because I'm really liking it myself. Before we go on to the next positive, I'll just tell you quickly where I'm filming this. I've talked about the Yoido skyline in my negatives video. This is the business district. This is a little island in itself. And this is the I Seoul U sign. There's 18 of these dotted around Seoul. And I've been thinking of making a video where I try and visit all of these in one day. That could be pretty fun. This area is also where people come on the weekend, especially when the weather's good, to have chicken and beer. And over there by the steps, where the train station exit is, there's lots of ajumas, and they sell things like tents, floor mats, and hand out flyers so you can call the chicken people. If you wanna come visit this place, there'll be a link to it in the description of this video. Now, let's go to positive numero three. This is positive number three. It's restaurants like these that make me love living in Korea. It's cheaper to eat out than it is to cook at home. All this for 8,001 with the side dishes included. Unreal. This is why I love living in Seoul. If I was in England, I couldn't eat like this every day. I'd be eating fish fingers and chips straight from the oven. Let me show you the main positive of eating in Korean restaurants like this. And just like that, more side dishes at no extra cost. That was flipping fantastic. Now, let's go to positive number four. For number four, I've come to the Bossingak Pavilion, which was used by the Joseon Dynasty when Seoul was called Hangyang City, and it was protected by a wall. And this was rang every day at 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. to let people know that the gate doors were gonna be open. And here it sits in the very center of Seoul in Jongno Gu. Positive number four is make new friends. Ooh, friends. It's so easy to meet new people in Seoul compared with back home and actually stay in touch with them. Back in England, I've had the same friends since high school and I might meet some people at the pub or outside a bar and have a little chat with them, but it's very rare I'll keep in touch. However, in Seoul, it's extremely easy to meet new people in the park, in a bar, in a language exchange and if you get on well with them, you're most likely going to see them again. My group since I've been here has kept growing and kept getting bigger. When I first came to Korea, I only knew Rafi. Then I met Jordan outside of Pyeongchang, and we had that little gang for a year. 
and then my second year in Korea has been completely different especially with YouTube I have made friends that way but then I've been going out to places like Hongdae to Yeonnam Park I've met people through friends that I've met at Yeonnam Park I've met friends that have brought friends along and they've come to chill with us at Sangsu Park last year the only English person I knew was Rafi this year most of the people that I know now are English so it just goes to show you how quick things can change here and how easy it is to make friends living in Seoul and that's definitely a positive of being a foreigner in Korea because back in my home country I would not have made this many friends because I'm actually a bit of a loser if you do live in Seoul or you've been to Seoul and you agree that it is easier to make friends living here give this video a like and also if you're enjoying the video give it a like I'd really like you now we're gonna go to the next spot I'm gonna share with you positive number five and then the last positive is the funny one that you've been waiting for and I've been waiting for and I'm probably gonna be laughing a lot because it's a really good one <laughs> Positive number five is probably the most useful one to know and that's all foreigners living in South Korea can learn Korean for absolutely free. But how? Just down the road from the pavilion is the Seoul Global Center where the immigration office is and they offer language courses but it's a first come first serve and it fills up pretty quickly. The language courses start at beginner they do intermediate and also advanced and they prepare you for topic and the best thing about it it's absolutely free how good is that there'll be a link to that course on the website in the description of this video so check out below if you want more information about studying in the Seoul Global Immigration Center can you hear the thunder I gotta get out of this weather where do I go <laughs> bloody hell it's crackling all right, I'm gonna go to Home Plus now to tell you positive number six. I'm in Home Plus, which is a huge Korean supermarket, and here's two facts for you. Most of the supermarkets in Korea are underground, and Home Plus is owned by Tesco. And if you come here as a foreigner with your passport, you get a tax refund. That's positive number six. The final positive of being a foreigner in Korea is definitely mistranslations. When you're walking down the street, you're gonna notice so many things that are spelled incorrectly, don't make sense, or have been translated completely wrong. For example, this restaurant here, their motto is, I'm in love with the cocoa. Also next to it here, Jadam Chicken, best natural food starts here. Oh, <laughs> what's that even mean? <laughs> How about a dirty cheese cutlet? Mmm, delicious. If you don't want a dirty cheese cutlet and you want to be a bit healthier, you could always go for the chili collagen salad. Mmm. I really like this one and I don't know if they've done it on purpose, but the flower shop's called Mary J Flower. So I don't know if it's named after Mary Jane, but of course in South Korea, the Mary Jane is illegal. So if they've done it on purpose, well done. If they've done it by accident, well done. I like it a lot. Mary J, salang he. Happy cheese smile. What do you want to do today? I want a chicken. And there we have it. Seven positives of being a foreigner in South Korea. And there was only five negatives. So you can see I like living in South Korea as a foreigner. It's a positive experience. I am knackered from making this video. I've been all around Seoul filming this. So if you have enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you haven't seen the negatives video, go find it on my channel. I think you'll really enjoy it as well to see both sides of the argument. Ooh, tomorrow's video, me, Joe and Bart go for lunch in Seoul and we share some pretty nice news with you at the end of that video. <sighs> if you're not already a subscriber, click the red button, turn on the bell New videos every Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time. See you in the next video.
Yosh. Joshi men and hedgehog dan and kuji like book and sand now wa mori of so binari unun sang dong yi yen jordan ni ji kimchi kimchi tang yes i eat